Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome back to the channel. I do apologize for not having much EUC footage as of lately, reviews, updates, or anything of the above. However, I am proud to bring you guys one of the first Bagode T4s, or Mini Master, as some are calling it, or the Tesla 4 to be confirmed. As you know, I always pay for these wheels, and this is a first batch wheel, not a pre-production unit, so you will get the EUC way of life, honest review, brutal or not, on the Bagode T4. You guys know that I do not like to do unboxings. They are mundane. They are all the same. However, a few things I do want to note on this one is these two screws in the front here that hold the foam to the headlight securely were not in there. I found one inside the bag that contains the unicycle and one underneath the foam in the box. So this may not happen to you. However, do be careful when you're taking everything out to see if anything is missing or maybe just laying around in the box. But Goad was kind enough to actually provide this Allen wrench. When you open the box, in the top of the foam above the wheel, this is directly inserted. There's a little cutout for it. So I'm assuming this is going to be standard with all wheels, not just mine. And I didn't know what this was for at first, but I had a feeling. And it is for the pedal grub screws and the grub screw that keeps the pedal up. So kind of nice for Bagode to provide that. And you can't really miss it in the box. It's shiny. It's right in the top of the foam. To get started with this wheel, one of the first things I want to point out is, not sure you could see inside those or not, but this is the same headlight as the master. So it's five watts a piece for the LEDs. However, my first batch master, these were flat lenses, not concave. So these are almost like mini projectors. I did have a chance to test this light, and I do believe it is exactly identical to the master. So don't expect greatness out of this headlight like you would the S22, the Sherman, or the V11. It is adjustable on the side. There's two screws, one that holds the light and one that's in an elongated hole to adjust the headlight up and down, just like the master, there are basically no grab points on this wheel other than the handle, which is identical to the master. It is plastic and it is a little scary to pick up the wheel from that handle, but a lot of people are doing it. It's I would prefer not to. I typically grab underneath the headlight and behind at the linkage. However, with this wheel's smaller platform, it is a little difficult to do that. One of the first things to note on the T4 is it does have a street tire. I would consider this more of a knobby tire because it does have these knobs here. They are about an eighth of an inch thick deep. It is a really nice tire. I do like it. Very rounded profile, not a super sharp edge like what's on the S18. So you could definitely get into those turns without feeling like there's that weird spot where if you go too far the wheel's just going to fall over. Very nimble, very agile. I really like this tire. However, if you look in there, this metal fender, it is very, very close to that. There's the mounting screws, and I do not believe it is adjustable. So for those wanting to swap to a knobby tire like myself, there might not be enough clearance here unless you bend this plate. And even then, it's going to be questionable. I have a Shinko 244. I'm going to swap this wheel at some point after I get testing on the original tire. I will update you guys if it fits. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but this is a first for me. It is a spokeless rim. Bagode supposedly made this wider and reinforced. It is a heavy wheel for its size, and it is a suspension wheel. So for those who really like to abuse their wheels, this may not bend as easy. It may not crack as easy. 
I do not know if it's Chinese yum or not, but it is interesting to see no spokes as well as, you know, it, it may be a bit stronger. This looks like they didn't really have a choice because they stuffed a 2,500 watt motor into a 16 inch wheel. However, I don't know if that's confirmed yet or not either. As you guys do know, it does come with the old school Bagode MSP MSX RS pedals. I think the EXN even came with these. I was opposed to it at first, thinking, okay, for the price point of this wheel, the new age of this wheel, everything coming standard with spike pedals, this should also be standard. However, the price point of it is definitely aimed more towards new users. A lot of people are going to be purchasing this wheel as a first-time wheel. This isn't, I'm upgrading my RS-19 to a Bagode T4 wheel, you know, maybe a 16X or something, but this is, price point-wise, a new entry-level wheel. So, with spike pedals, you get the problem of when people are learning, they try to get their second foot planted, that it's very hard to get it placed where you needed to without getting stuck on the spikes. So I actually really appreciate that this wheel came with regular old pedals. For new riders, this is going to be much easier. We all prefer different spiked pedals, so in the case of that, you know, we upgrade. We all upgrade parts, power pads, etc. It, you know, it's it. They're basic pedals. It's a bare bones wheel. I expect it spiked, but I appreciate that it's not. As you can see with the shock tube. It is just like the Master, however, quite a bit smaller. They did do some really cool CNC working on there. It looks nice and pretty. You could actually see straight through to the wheel in there, which is kind of interesting. And it is a very robust CNC tube. So, one, it's extremely smooth, and two, it's robust. You don't have to worry about this, you know, getting really dirty, binding, having any issues because of the way it's designed and made. This sitting here, I'm sure you guys saw at the beginning of the video, actually came in the bottom of the shock down there. This is bottomed out. However, the tube goes straight through and is connected at the bottom of the pedal hanger. This was in the bottom on this tube. I thought it was a bump stop, which prevents your suspension from bottoming out or getting damage from bottoming out. However, as soon as I started filling the suspension, I noticed that this got stuck and my suspension travel did not look like 100 millimeters. This does not belong down there. I wouldn't leave it down there. I would put it up in the top if you wanted to to help prevent the suspension from bottoming out, damaging that O-ring or anything else. However, I removed mine. I'm not going to use mine. The master didn't have them, so I don't see the sense in putting this in there. It did come with one on each side. There was two spares inside the batter or the charging uh, charger box, I should say. Sorry, and it is nice. So I'm assuming they're expecting you to use these since there was spares. It does come with a five amp charger. I obviously don't have it on hand. Basic bagode pin layout and circular plug and it, you know it's it's an upgrade from the old being five amps it charges this wheel in three and a half hours or so the other thing to note on it is if you see here the pads themselves actually protrude out quite a bit further so compared to my master not sure if the new gens have it or not these are pretty good probably one of the best i've seen as far as having leverage over the wheel as you know i do not like this width here it's too much between the brake and the power pad in my opinion for new riders it's nice because this won't rub on you causing discomfort however you know a new rider is not going to be able to bend their knees that far to make contact with both the jump pad is very wide three wing three fingers wide i Appreciate it. I really like it. However, because there is no stop in the back here and no spiked pedals, every time I jumped with this wheel, my foot slid back. It is a heavy wheel for its size. 
the pads do stick really nicely. However, because of the contour for your foot, that angle and the slippery foam, it, you just slide out of it. So they work, they're really good for stock pads. However, for jumping purposes, I don't prefer them. They are lined with tape like all of the Bagode and most pads, so it's kind of a one-time stick deal. When you get them on the wheel, you could peel and stick it a couple of times to get it placed just right for your foot. However, they do not come with Velcro. This foam, as you can see, is actually much, much softer and more pliable than what came on the Master. I'm not sure if the new Masters have it, but I'm able to move this foam around a lot easier without having to worry about it tearing like my first master did when I went to go adjust the headlight out of the box. As you can see here, the seat actually comes up at quite a bit of an incline. Personally, out of the box, this is the most comfortable seated riding I have ever done on a wheel out of the box. That lift in the back helps proportion your weight over the wheel better so you're not rolling back like the Master, or the S22, or the Hero, or the EX20S, or many other newer wheels. So it is nice that they did that. It is a rounded profile right here with that slant. So it's actually very, very comfortable. Even me being you know 220 pounds, this foam was nice. I rode around on it, it felt really great. I appreciate that they replaced this metal bracket system to help support the seat better and kind of naturally give you that lean. However, there is a downside to that. And when I go into the full in-depth review, I will let you guys know why I say that. The tail lights are adjustable. Really nice idea. I believe they may or may not have taken that idea from me in my YouTube video about upgrading the master tail lights. However, they kind of one-up me with the whole bracket system. This does feel like ABS. It may be metal, but I don't believe it is. That is the screw that holds it in place. And, you know, it is adjustable. During the day, if you aim it down, it's probably going to be useless because they're very narrow angle. But you're not blinding people at night when you aim them down, so it's kind of cool that you get that. I will probably take them off and adhere them to the back of the battery packs because if you look from the side profile, without the pad, has a lot of gap and a lot of exposed tail light. You know, it's a heck of a lot better than the one underneath the seat like the Master, the Hero, and the EX20S came with. So you don't have to worry about sitting on the wheel and breaking it or picking it up by it and breaking it. But, you know, they are still plastic. There is some silicone seal here. So it does look like water ingress isn't likely to happen in these, which is nice. I don't know if those are waterproof LED strips in there or not, though. So, nice tail lights, definitely an upgrade. Still plastic, still potentially an issue. As you can see, this wheel has a very, very lovely fender. Absolutely amazing. Good job, Pagode. You know, you can't see my fingers up in here at all. You're not going to have dirt and mud all over your shaft on your shock. It's just, you know, this is the pinnacle of fenders and mud guards. Just kidding you guys, it's bent, it's small, it's dinky, it's not going to do much, but again, when you look at the wheel for its price point where it starts, it comes with it. You know, they could not provide it, but they do. So it's a really nice thing that they do. My opinion, when you ride a bicycle, you know, if it doesn't have a fender, you're flinging mud up onto your back. This prevents that. It's not necessarily to keep the wheel clean. This is a very basic design, very modular looking wheel. It's to prevent that crap from getting all over you. I appreciate it's there. Not the best. However, they provide it. Once again, it is adjustable. It's small. It's probably less likely to break because it's smaller. And they did do this kind of little bend here, which is nice. The battery packs are plastic. I believe they are identical to the master battery packs, just shorter in length. Width-wise, 100%, they've got to be the same exact battery pack casings, sorry. So there is going to be quite a few of you that are, you know, afraid of damaging this and the batteries. 
My aftermarket PIPS pads will protrude out further, giving quite a bit of protection. Unlike the Master, there is no foam that protects the bottom corners of these packs. So do note that. You know, I'm sure Clark and a few others are going to make whole kits that protect the battery packs. I was never too worried about it. I'm still not that worried about it. However, to each their own, it is the plastic battery casings, and they are exposed technically. If you look here, there is two screw holes. That is because this is the same bracket system the Master has. However, there's no kickstand. A little frustrating there because I have tried a million things. The headlight's not stable enough. If you bend this down, it still sits on this and the linkage. If you bend it up, it gets in the way of the linkage. There is no way to sit this wheel down properly out of the box. A little frustrating. This, as many of you know from the past, I use on all of my wheels that don't have a kickstand. They're like $18 on Amazon. They work great. They're modular. They come apart with screws. You know, I'll link it in the description below. However, out of the box, the Bigo T4 does not have a kickstand. Bringing you to the shock here, it is the Bigo shock with the 90 degree valve. So looking at the suspension here, it looks like it is a bit thinner than the Master. It does not have the screw holes that the Master had. However, it is basically identical, very narrow in here which is unfortunate because if you go to upgrade to a coil it is going to bind in there for sure. If you go to upgrade to a different air shock most don't have a 90 degree valve they come out at an angle so this may or may not be in the way I do not know however this shock works very well out of the box you know I don't need compression adjustment I don't prefer compression adjustment the rebound is my biggest thing it prevents the wheel from feeling too bouncy and kicking you off this, however, has 28 clicks of adjustment, which is absolutely bonkers to me. However, it really allows you to fine-tune this air shock. My master, I filled to 400 PSI or something in order for it to support my weight because it was faulty. And this one I filled to 200, I'm 220, and this supports me with 200 PSI in it. So again, you know, cheers to Bagode for addressing the shock issue fixing the shock issue and implementing it in the newer wheels. There's obviously some play in the bushings here, not as much as the master, you know, it could allow the shock to move, but once there's pressure in that shock, it's not going to start shifting side to side. You could see the clearance here from how they raise to the seat. However, it's not a good grab point because the screws come through, so you're grabbing onto those screws to try to get your hand in there. I don't have huge hands by any means, but it's not a comfortable point to grab by. All in all, this is a just quick run around on the wheel. My thoughts of this wheel out of the box. There is a lot of RTV silicone on the battery packs where the wires go in. I have not checked the display and where it, you know, the wires go in and everything comes out. The master was horrible, even with the foam. There was a lot going on and not a lot of coverage. So granted water is not going to come in from the bottom and get in there very easily. However, it was not very waterproof like the S22. I will update you guys once I take this apart and let you know. Underneath the trolley handle, there is dual charging ports. I believe you could charge this wheel up to 10 amps. So it is nice that they still provide that. Kind of annoying they took away the USBs but I never really used them in the first place. So I'm sure many of you have been trying to find a lot of videos online, like myself, about this wheel. It is very small form factor. I mean, it, comparing it to the S18, it is narrower front to back. So very cool that they made this wheel. I'm super excited about this wheel. It's definitely going to be tailored to newer riders, not so much upgrading to it. However, for a lighter performance suspension wheel, this is going to be an amazing wheel. I could already tell you. The screen, basic Bagode screen, it's actually smaller. It doesn't make it really any harder to read. However, I believe that's still in kilometers, so it doesn't benefit us people here in the U.S. However, you know, battery bars, the mode it's in as far as soft, medium, or hard riding, Bagode, 
the temperature, your distance, your speed. So same basic stuff. Again, you know, it's, it's a really great wheel for the price. I'm not offended by the non-spiked pedals. Couple quick notes that I forgot to mention on this wheel. I meant hybrid tire on this because it's kind of a mix between a knobby and a regular street tire. So not knobby, hybrid tire. The other thing I wanted to mention too is the battery packs were coated front and back with the plastic wrap. So you do have to remove these two screws and the two bottom screws in order to get that plastic off. And the pedal with its angle, very flat in compared to the RS. <clears throat> the Allen wrench can't easily get to those bottom ones, so that might be why they provided the Allen wrench, because if you want to peel the plastics to stick the foam on, you do have to remove the battery packs. A little unfortunate, but four screws for each one, not super, super difficult to do. The other thing is this does come with an air pump. It is one of the really nice air pumps. I don't have it here with me. And it does have the little on off clicky valve where it threads onto the shock. So you thread it onto the shock and you flip the valve, you know, it pressurizes the tube, you fill it up, you release the valve and then you release the pressure from the tubing and you could unthread it. So it is nice. It gives you a more accurate reading and filling on the actual shock itself. So good job, Bagode, for providing a better shock pump. That, I believe, is everything I wanted to cover on this Bagode T4. This is the pump. I didn't want to leave it out of the video. As you can see, it goes to 300 PSI. This is actually the same style one I bought on Amazon to fill the master shock at over 400. So you can pump past the 300. This is the air release valve. And then this here is the little clicky valve to engage it with the actual shock. It, it flips the little valve in there and pushes the valve on the shock. So with a style like this, super, super easy, better accurate reading of the air inside your shock. I use this on the S18, so I really do like this style. When you do pump the shock up, do note it is almost impossible to unscrew this with the pressure in the line. So you flip this backwards to disconnect it from the shock and then use that air relief valve there, the little button, push that in until the shock or the pump reads zero, and then you could start to unscrew this. So that is the pump that comes with it. It is nice, they are providing a better pump. And as always, if you guys have any questions on anything I left out, please do feel free to drop a comment below. I love the conversation, all you guys are awesome. The support is wonderful. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video with your friends, soon-to-be hobbyists, and have a beautiful day, you beautiful people.